Hi, everybody. Um, since I started doing these daily forecasts on my YouTube channel, many of you, or at least some of you, <laughs> have asked me to start breaking out topics. And I'm, I'm hoping to start doing that on a weekly basis. So I'm going to begin today with uh, taking some slides off a presentation I did back in December for the um, Northwest or Oregon grass seed growers. Basically, I presented to a group of grass seed farmers, which is we're number one in Oregon, if you didn't know in terms of grass seed production. So let's show you a lot of these slides are data specific to PDX and generally I go back to about 1970 and it makes sense to start with just some of the, the nuts and bolts data. So again, site specific to PDX month to month. This shows you degrees Fahrenheit, how the mean temperature has warmed. Remember the mean temperature is if you take the average of the low, the high, you put together, you come up with the mean temperature. So I'm comparing the climate averages from 1971 to 2000 to most recently 1991 to 2020. The way this works, the National Weather Service, the top of each decade, they take a new average over the past 30 years, and they say that is now the climate average of what's normal. So when you hear your forecaster saying, hey, the normal high today is 80 degrees, that's what we're talking about. So if you compare what was normal from 71 to 2000 and what we now say is normal, 91 to 2020, you come up with every single month showing some degree of warming in terms of Fahrenheit. January, two degrees warmer than it was back in the old climate set. February, plus one. March, plus one. April, plus two. And again, you're going to find all these are about the same. May, plus two. June, not quite as warm. July, August, plus two. Let's figure it out. September, plus two. October, not as warm, but still a degree above, uh, warmer than it was. And then November, December, showing 1.5 degree Fahrenheit warmer climate numbers now than what we had back in the data of 71 to 2000. So on average, you figure, okay, if you go back to 1970-ish, if you will, Portland is seeing every single month at least one to two degrees Fahrenheit warming overall. And it'll be interesting to see if this trend continues. Most climatologists believe that it will. Now, the most easy um, season to pick out that really shows a boom of warming would be the summer months. So let's talk about hot weather. It's really been a topic the last handful of summers, right? So let's talk about 80 degree days, site specific to PDX. If you go back to 1940 to 1969, Portland averaged 45 80 degree days each summer. So that also mixed in some very comfortable 70 degree days. But from 70 to 89, now all of a sudden that average goes up to 53. That's almost two additional weeks of 80 degree heat, right? 1990 to 2019, we're now all the way up to 59 degrees. So we've jumped since 1940 to currently, we've jumped from an average of 45, 80 degree days to nearly 60. That means we're seeing fewer and fewer of those 70 degree comfortable days and certainly an increased need for AC, which has been a topic in the news. What about 90 degree days? The trend is also up. 1940, we averaged 9 through 69. 1970 to 89, we averaged 13. The current 2013, 2019, we're now averaging more than two weeks of 90 degree temperatures or better at 16. And we're also seeing, if you go back and average out 70 to 2019, the average, this hasn't changed as much, but we expect it to start trending more upward. And that would be the number of 100 degree days. Let's hope that doesn't change much or at least doesn't go up much more, right? Those are pretty uncomfortable days, I think we'll all agree. And this is interesting. So meteorological summer are the months of June, July, and August. So what this shows you, uh, for Portland, site specific, I keep reminding you of that, um, are the three warmest summers uh, that we've had in the record books in terms of mean temperature. So number one is the warmest summer we've ever had in terms of the record book is 2015. 72.2 was the mean temperature averaging high and low throughout those three months. 2021 comes in second place, and then the summer we just had of 2022 is actually in third place. So what catches your eye here is that these are all fairly recent. The warmest summers, top three, have all been pretty recent. What about precipitation? I don't know if this is going to surprise you or not, but it really hasn't changed. If you're talking about total liquid precipitation for Portland, here was the average 1971 to 2000. It was just under 38 inches. And you can see we've down a little bit in 81 to 2020, back up 91 to 2020, and then slightly down 2001 to 2020. But, I mean, that's a slight variation. So let's say precipitation for Portland hasn't changed. Now, a lot of the farmers I spoke with when I was presenting to those grass seed growers said uh, that the, the folks that live down in the Eugene area, the South Willamette Valley, and even southward down in the Klamath Basin, 
have noticed that southern Oregon is starting to dry out, although north Oregon so far has been holding, holding its own. So depending on where you spend a lot of your time, maybe you've noticed the, the same thing. Let's talk about Mount Hood snowpack. So what this shows you is the percentage of stored water, how much water you have if you would melt all the snow in the snowpack up on Mount Hood, not the entire Cascades, but Mount Hood site specific. And what I want you to notice is, so here's the 100% of normal. So 100% of normal is right around 60 inches, 59 inches now. It's been trending downward a little bit. What I want you to notice is if you go back to 2000, and if I run my, line, my hand right here, while there's only been a few really dry years, 2004 was really dry, 2014 was really dry, the other years don't look bad, but notice all but a few of them fail to get up to the 100% of normal line. So we are overall starting to trend downward a little bit. And in fact, that is being attributed to a snow level that is going up and up and up. So if you have a higher snow level, you're getting more rain on the mountain, not as much snow. You're not storing as much in the snowpack. And even though you could say the precipitation in the, in the Cascades and Mount Hood also is holding steady, the bad news is less and less of it on any given year is snow, so we're not storing as much water. Um, I want to, just a couple more things I want to show you that I find that I find pretty interesting. This I find pretty interesting. Uh, that's not the one, it's not the one I thought I was going to show you. I want to show you this one. Just kind of picking and choosing here. Strongest Storms Highway. So, you know, we're, we're blessed in terms of water. The jet stream quadrant of entrance into the west coast of the United States is, is most typically up in Oregon and Washington where we live. You know, we're, we live in this, you know, 30 to the, the 60 degree latitude portion, you know, right in here. Now there is some talk that the overall jet stream with climate change and warming is going to start shifting more to the north, which would, if that continues over time, would take some of Northern California's moisture and put it up into Southern Oregon, would take some of our moisture that we're getting here in, in, in uh, the Willamette Valley and pushing it up into Canada. So these are just things to watch in the coming decades uh, to see if they hold true or not. And let's see here. Lightning. I, mean, I, I often mention this. Instability is increasing in the atmosphere. We have more unstable days, more days with potential lightning than we did when I moved here and started to forecast in 1999. So this is an interesting stat that I found. One major study from 2014 estimates that if warming continues at its current pace, the number of lightning strikes in the U.S. could increase by as much as 50% by the end of the century. With each additional, this is interesting, with each additional one degree Celsius of warming, generating about 12% more strikes. So that would go with a warming climate. You become increasingly unstable, and you start to get more and more lightning strikes. And it, that certainly seems to be the case. U.S. Forest Service stats that I've seen that have been shared with me do show that Oregon as a whole, lightning strikes are on the increase. Of course, the other thing, and I'm about done here, you know, the fact that we're losing glacial ice uh, is something that's been very well documented through pictures. This is up on Mount Baker. It shows you, um, you know, how much, what this particular glacier was in 2012, and then what this latest picture was in, in 2021, and you can definitely see um, a vast difference right there. Now, one thing that's interesting is Portland ice loss in that summer of 2021, the historic hot summer, uh, historic in terms of that heat wave we had in June, and it said in the North Cascades, the overall area of ice in the North Cascades has shrunk by more than half since 1900. And then it says from California to Canada, the exceptional summer heat of 2021 was rough on glaciers, with many losing at least 5%, at least 5%, pardon me, of their volume in a single summer. And of course, that was that summer of tremendous, tremendous heat. That was the one, Portland went 108, 112, and set the all-time record now for 116, which has buried the previous record of 107. Um, this was a really long presentation I did. It was about an hour and a half. <laughs> so I'm just kind of pick and choose some of these. Now, I'll finish with this one. Conclusions. Next 30 years, warming another 2 to 3 degrees. If you go back to 1970, climate average is up anywhere from 1 degree to 2 degrees. This is saying we could go another 2 to 3 degrees in the next 30 years. We'll see if that happens, of course. These are all estimates or, or scientific theory. We'll have to wait and see if it comes true. Um, Precept constant, but increased evaporatory rates to lower lake beds. You know, remember the hotter you get, the more moisture you tend on those warm, dry days 
to suck out of the ground. And that itself kind of makes drought conditions in areas that have been moisture starved worsen. So we'll be watching that. Storm track shifting to the north. Will that take place? I think if that does happen, it's going to be something that's very slowly to notice, but, but we'll see. Uh, no concrete or good data on the increase or return of strongest storms, such as the Columbus Day or the Great Gale of 2007. That was the one that hit the north coast with Category 3 uh, hurricane winds, and places in Tillamook County were on power generators for weeks and weeks and weeks. Let's hope <laughs> that we don't see those return, those cycles, uh, very much. The current return path on those strength of storms is somewhere between 25 and 45 years on a return cycle. Let's hope that doesn't start speeding up. But, and then more 80 to 95 to 100 degree days. That seems to be a pretty high confidence call based on what has happened and the fact that temperatures are projected to continue going up. Okay, I hope you found some of this interesting. You know, there were, there were some graphics of theory that I had mixed in there from research and reading that I've done. But a lot of what I just showed you is just absolutely concrete temperature data and precip data from Portland and up on the Mount Hood test site that's not arguable. That does show that we have been warming uh, since the uh, climate averages that started back in 1970. Uh, with that said, and before he looks well, I was going to show you something else, but I'll, I'll leave it there. Um, you can write me some questions. I do check my YouTube comments. Um, and again, I hope you like this channel. If you do, hit subscribe, tell your friends about it. And coming up next, I hope to tackle the wind, which has really been something that's been uh, breaking records in its own right so far this winter. So look for that coming up sometime soon.